good to see you again. Yeah. Really excited to hear more stories about the cultural center. Oh, for sure. So far, so good. I'm going to meet my name is Tony Wong, and I've been involved with the Culture Center even before the association was incorporated. Uh, that is in the early 80s when uh, some landowners want to redevelop uh, Chinatown and build, build it up into high area to floor ratio. And I was one of those volunteers that uh, came out and uh, opposed the, the proposal. And uh, eventually that led to the incorporation of the Chinese Cultural Center Association, who uh, successfully negotiated uh, for the landowners to donate uh, pieces of the land. In the early 80s, uh, the landowners were trying to change the, uh, the, the, the land use bylaw to allow them to build higher density. But we know that high density development will destroy Chinatown because when you look around the world, places like LA, San Francisco, New York, or Paris, or even London, uh, their Chinatown are uh, low density development because that's the best way to preserve the characters of, of Chinatown. When you build 40 story office towers, um, the, the landowner is not going to let you run Chinese restaurants in them or, or Chinese grocery stores on the, on the lobby. So that's why we want to preserve the character of Chinatown by opposing high density development. And how was the land acquired? What was some of that process? Uh, at the time, uh, the, the landowners insist on getting high density development. But we, we as a volunteer group, we believe that in order to preserve Chinatown, we have, must have low dense density. So this building density became a key issue. And in order to um, negate the, the negative uh, uh, effects that is going to, to, to be brought to Chinatown with their development, we suggest to the landowners that uh, they donate a piece of their, their land to us so that we can build a Chinatown that would define the boundary of Chinatown, that would define the nature of a community. So um, after a long negotiation with the help of the city planning department, the landowner agrees to it and that's, why, that's how we got our land. They were private landowners? Yes, they were private landowners. And when was this building built? This building was completed in September 1992. I, I loved hearing some of your stories about um, the, the little details of how this building was built, but, but even before that, because I do want you to share a couple of stories about that. Tell me about like the building design. Like what are we looking at here that you think, you know, was part of this whole process to define like the Chinese Cultural Center in Chinatown, like a boundary of Chinatown, which has a very important role. Uh, when we were designing the Chinese Cultural Center, we thought it would be essential to, uh, to have some elements in the building in itself that when people see it, then they instantly recognize its Chinese character and realize that it is a Chinese Cultural Center. So after some, um, some studies and some exchange of ideas, then um, we came up with the idea that, hey, look, the Temple of Heaven is the most uh, unique building in China. When people see it, they, they would know that it is unique and it has Chinese characters. So we incorporate the Temple of Heaven into our design. When we look at this, the interior of it, we, we have the dome that is copied after the Temple of Heaven. Up here, yeah. Uh, the four large columns represent the four seasons. And when you look at the peripheral, you see the smaller, the 12 smaller columns, which represents the 12 months of the year. Mm. And what about the, um, 
some of the skilled workers or skilled talent that you use during the construction process to build uh, parts of the building, like the dome and the columns? When this was under construction, we had 23 uh, skilled workers from Beijing. They came and stayed here for six months and they decorated all this that you see today. Uh, the gold color that you see are real gold foil. When you look at the ceiling, if you count carefully, you'll find 541 dragons. Now the dragons represent the, the divine uh, mandate from heaven. Uh, so rep it represents the, the emperor. And in the old days, when China was under imperial rule, uh, no one is allowed to use the dragon with five claws as a symbol of decoration. Mm. Only the emperor can use it. Uh, even a, a prince or princess, they can only use the, the dragon with four claws. Four claws, yeah. okay. And ordinary uh, citizens uh -huh. are not allowed to use the dragons at, at, at all. How many claws do these ones have? Oh, these ones are five claws. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you look at the ceiling, you can, if you count the claws on the dragon, oh, even even this one just oh, right above us, yeah. yeah, you can see the five claw. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, it's got one claw that's like higher up, and then the four claws on yeah. the ground. Yeah, that, that's right. Yeah. So um, in the before 1911, that is not allowed. Got it. But because it. of the revolution in 1911, we can now use it. Now we have a total of 40, four zero. Phoenix, uh, Phoenix is, yeah. in here, and the Phoenix represents the, the queen, or the, hmm. or the um, and it is the divine, uh, I would say, uh, um, divine symbol that represents the female royalty. So this is the dome that we basically have been walking around right. um, inside, underneath. Yeah. If you were to like point out what are the main kind of areas like the multi-purpose space where oh, is it or okay so um now we're on the west side and that is the east side so this would be north and uh, underneath this roof would be our uh, uh, multifunction uh, space so that that we use as a performing stage or banquet facility or gymnasium and on the right hand side uh, on the second floor would be our many uh, classrooms and meeting rooms. In the in the center used to be our library. Now have been converted to a multi-function room. And then on the main floor is the daycare. And in the I basement see, yeah. would be the restaurant. The restaurant, I yeah. see. And you've always had a restaurant there on the basement level. Yes. Correct. Yes. Got it. What are some of the different activities or events uh, you've had, you've hosted in the cultural center? We hold our annual Chinese New Year carnival at the cultural center. Right here in where, this whole atrium. Yes, yeah. where thousands of people showed up and politicians and uh, non-Chinese, they, they would come and celebrate with us. I guess that would be one of our largest events. Uh, but throughout the year, we, we do celebrate Canada Day, our national day, and we celebrate it with performance. We invite different people of ethnic or, uh, origins to, to come and, uh, and celebrate with us. Um, we, we also celebrate some other Chinese uh, festivals, such as the Lantern Festival in, in autumn. Um, now, in the past, we held many uh, sporting events, like uh, we, we even held a boxing uh, match in uh, in our gymnasium. Oh wow! We also uh, hold many many uh, tour groups uh, at the culture center. Sure. We receive uh, literally hundreds of tour groups because um, the Calgary Board of Education part of their curriculum is for the grade three or grade four students to study about Asia or China. Then their teachers would bring their, their children to, to the culture center. You know, one last question for you. What do you think or what do you hope that the Chinese Cultural Center means 
for the Chinatown community, for the Calgary Chinatown community. So we are just hoping that with the Cultural Center, we can host more activities to attract younger Chinese to come down and use this facility so that we can preserve our, our culture, we can promote more uh, cultural interaction, and we can encourage other ethnic groups to, to interact with us to help build a more harmonious society.